Hi everybody, I'm Sunny and you're watching Sunny Preps. Welcome back if you're a regular watcher, otherwise welcome for the first time. When I started thinking about prepping, I wanted to make sure that if we did not have electricity, I could still function pretty much as normally. So one of the things I bought that my grandmother always had around and she didn't actually use it was an antique coffee grinder. So I was looking through an antique store one day and I saw this antique coffee grinder and I picked it up. And I've never tried it before, so I'm gonna try it because coffee beans will last longer, from what I understand, than ground coffee. Um, oh, that smells so good. <laughs> so I've never tried it before, so I thought I would pour some of these beans in here give it a shot. I actually usually just use pre-ground coffee. All right, so here we go. It's not hard to turn. It's a little hard. I don't know where to hold on to it. I think if I had the whole thing full of coffee, this would work better. They don't seem to fall down in there very well. Okay, all that grinding there. I got that tiny little bit of coffee. Can you see what's in there? Yeah, all that grinding so far, that's what I've got. I'm going to keep going. I'm actually wanting to test this on something else too, so I'll tell you that in just a minute. And this seems to be very finely ground. This is a powder. I was thinking that coffee ground in this would be coarser and so that it would make more sense in an old-fashioned percolator but I said I didn't really have old-fashioned percolators when they were using this so I'm guessing it's cowboy coffee for this one I don't think the percolator is going to hold that it's too fine coffee for all that grinding but in a way that's actually pretty good because it would force you to uh, not waste it okay I'm gonna dump this uh, somewhere in another bowl I guess and I'm gonna try something else I'll be right back okay what I have here is dehydrated corn now it, and it's vacuum packed. It was dehydrated about six months ago. The thing is, I've never tried to rehydrate it, so I don't know if it's any good when it's rehydrated. I want to make sure of that. And the other thing is, I want to see if this thing works as a grain mill. I have no idea. If it's anything like the coffee, I'm going to have to pour a lot in there to see if it works as a grain mill. Let's give it a shot. Well, that first bit looks like it's got some coffee in it, but yeah, I'd say it, it will work as a grain mill. I've never tried to make cornbread uh, out of corn that I milled myself. So that'll be probably another video, but at least I got to test this out to see if it would work. I don't see why not. Comes out quite fine. Quite fine. Um, 
Again, it still might be a little brown from the coffee, but you know what? I don't care if there's a little coffee in my cornbread. <laughs> it won't hurt me a bit. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty fine. Um, and I will keep trying on that. I also want to try rehydrating this, and I heard that, or I read on the internet that you take um, take this pour in boiling water, you know, put this in a, a cup or a pan or a jar or whatever you want to put it in, pour in enough boiling water to cover it and let it sit until it's plump and as good as new. So I'm going to give it a shot. So the reason I need to find out whether the dehydrated corn is good for me to use, I mean, I'm sure it would be fine to use in soups and casseroles. I want to see if it's actually good to eat just as corn, uh, maybe with a little salt and butter. Um, I just like popcorn. It's my freezer is full. So, and I have a lot of dehydrated veg vegetables. I have a lot of dehydrated corn, some beans, and some peas. And I've already um, dehydrated some beans and peas. And right now I'm going to figure if the corn works, those will too. And if even, even if they're not good to eat uh, as beans, I think the peas will be fine. But even if the beans aren't good to eat as just plain beans, they'll be fine in uh, stews and soups and casseroles and things like that. So that's not a problem. I just want to make sure that the corn is good before I start de dehydrating a bunch more. But while I'm waiting for my water to heat up, I'm going to show you how I dehydrate the corn. And I do plan to make a solar dehydrator I just don't know when I'm going to get to it. It'll probably be winter before I get to that. So for right now, I'm going to rely on this very inexpensive dehydrator that I got from Aldi. And I cut out a plastic window screen. I had this for another, for actually a window project. And this is leftover. So I cut this out to fit in the dehydrator tray. Because once the corn, well, even when it's full, but especially once it starts to dehydrate, the corn falls right through these little, um, through this grid. So I have screen. And this is really easy to wash just with your regular dishes. It's pretty sturdy. And it's plastic. You have to make sure it's plastic and not the metal type of screening. If my solar dehydrator is not successful, I'm definitely getting an Excalibur. But I, like I said at the beginning, I don't want to have to rely on electricity. Even if we don't have an EMP or a terrorist attack that knocks out the electricity, a severe economic turn, I believe, would affect our availability of electricity. California, from what I heard, has already said that they might have rolling blackouts or brownouts or scheduled interruptions of service. I know during the 70s, New York City and other heavily populated areas had rolling brownouts and blackouts because the system was just not equipped to supply electricity for the demand that was coming. So if we have any kind of civil unrest, economic distress, anything like that, our electric grid is vulnerable. So I don't want to rely on it. Right now I'm going to um, because we have it. But that's why I'm building the solar dehydrator. Okay, my water was boiling. I'm going to pour it in slowly because I don't want to crack my jar. I didn't preheat the jar or anything, and I don't, hopefully, it won't crack. It's 
Smells like corn. The package of corn that I showed you dehydrated is essentially equivalent to one of these bags of frozen corn. Yeah, it's one pound. So this dehydrates down to that packet I showed you earlier. That's why I like dehydrating. It reduces the size. It reduces the weight. It, um, you know, I don't have to store heavy glass. If I needed to bug out, I, it was a lot easier to carry 10 of those little bags than 10 jars of canned corn. Um, and if my freezer gives out, um, this corn isn't going to do any good. I'm, or if it gets too full. Right now I need to put tomatoes in from the garden until I have time to can them. Um, but if the freezer ever goes out for lack of electricity or for any other reason, this is completely vulnerable. The dehydrated doesn't rely on electricity to be running. So I'm hoping this works nicely and I can dehydrate a lot more. I decided to put the lid on the jar. I thought maybe the pressure would help it speed along a little bit. I believe what I read online said it might take 10 or 15 minutes and I forgot to make a note of the time of when I started uh, started this process but I believe it's been less than five minutes so far and probably 15 minutes will be more than sufficient. While I am waiting for that process I'm going to go ahead and start dehydrating some more corn. So the first thing I actually do when I want to um, dehydrate my corn, and it might not be actually necessary, but I run this through um, hot water. I thaw it out through hot water in a colander. if you planned ahead and just let it thaw and drain in a colander you really wouldn't need the hot water um, but by the time I got home from work it was 9 30 I want to get this started so it runs overnight I'm using the hot water we go that one's ready now because my dehydrator heats from the bottom and blows air up from the bottom out through the top after it's been going a while maybe first thing when I get up in the morning I'll switch the bottom layer and put it at the top or take it out altogether if it's dry This is actually quite a bit smaller of a bag. This is only 12 ounces and not 16 ounces. I believe I got this one from Aldi and I think it was a dollar. And that's 16 ounces. If you can see where I got this one. 12 ounces. I think it was also a dollar, but I'm not sure. Maybe it was 88 cents. Anyway, at the rate the Midwest is going with all of the flooding that they've had and all the problems they're going to have feeding their animals, either way, it's a bargain. It's in my pantry. I absolutely marvel at how Alaska Prepper 
knows what he paid for something five years later. How does he do that? It's amazing. <laughs> I do not have that talent. Okay, I set the dehydrator on a medium heat and it will have to at least go for overnight, um, probably longer than that, and I just let it go until it gets crunchy. No soft spots. Alright, this has been going for at least 20 minutes. Uh, maybe it would have been better if I put it in the water and just let it boil, but I'm going to give it a try. It's good. It could probably go a little bit longer, like I said, put it in the water and let it boil. Um, looks like this one that got a little brown, but not much. So this doesn't have any salt or anything on it, and I do like some salt on my corn. But it's actually really good. I'll probably have some of this as sort of a bedtime snack, and then I'm going to hit the hay. I will show you the dehydrating in the morning and see how far it came. Okay, it's the next morning and I've gotten all my layers off of the dehydrator and as you can see the top is starting to dehydrate but that is still very moist. I'll just give it a little stir. There's not even really much point in stirring this but as you move further down it gets a little bit more these kernels are bigger in this, uh, the Walmart bag. It was only 12 ounces instead of 16, but the kernels are huge. So I am just going to change positions, put this one in at the bottom, back here, and then put this one on top of that. And you can see how much more this is dehydrated. This is really done right here, but there's some others over here that's not, so let's sort of spread it out a little bit. And this layer is actually done. I'm perfectly happy with this. So I'm going to put this in uh, just a Tupperware bowl for now. And then I will uh, put it in the food saver. And actually, I am either going to do more corn on this. Um, or some green beans this time. Okay, I'll turn the dehydrator on and then get the more corn or beans going. And this will just wait until we're all done. Okay, here's a tray of green beans ready to go into the dehydrator. And this is just... Um, frozen green beans. It's not anything I grew myself. Hello, it's the next day again. And as most of you know, I'm super busy even outside of my home and garden efforts and YouTubing efforts. And so I do not get into the garden every day to harvest my tomatoes, but I got to harvest again today. And I'll show you what I got. Plus I had some sitting here um, on the screened in porch trying to let them ripen up. Well, they attracted a whole lot of fruit flies. So we are definitely going to process what we can and pitch what we can't um, today and uh, I'll show you the results of the dehydrator. It got turned off for a while so it didn't go as well as I wanted but I need to keep cycling stuff through there to make room for these tomatoes. Here are the tomatoes I picked today. Um, I did, a, I thought it was going to break my basket just carrying it back into the house and there are a few lima beans. Uh, not too many, but I didn't plant too many of anything except tomatoes. I went crazy on the tomatoes this year, which is funny because I don't even eat raw tomatoes. I'm just going to preserve them. Now, I think I talked about this before, maybe even have shown it. I am doing what Jess from Roost and Refuge recommends because you get a little bit of tomatoes today, you get a little bit tomorrow, you get a little bit the next day. 
and I'm not going to uh, sit and process tomatoes every day. So um, I will wash them off, peel out this cracking area, and then score the bottom. And this is not really the right knife for this. Picked up the wrong one. I don't know why, but she scores the bottom, core and score, and puts it in a bag to put it in the freezer. So that's what I'm doing with that. I'm going to finish making these bag fulls, and then we're going to check the dehydrator again to see if I can clear anything else out of the freezer today. Okay, there's the haul for basically two days. I mean, they weren't, they were picked maybe two weeks apart, or a week apart, but so maybe it's two weeks worth of tomatoes here, but there's four and a half bags for the freezer. Um, I definitely am going to make a trip to the Dollar Tree and see if I can find some really big Tupperware so I don't have to keep reusing this uh, single-use plastic. I mean, I will wash this out and reuse these when I empty them and process the tomatoes if they are intact, but there's no sense to keep wasting this. Um, Really, if my freezer's cleaned out, I can even put a five gallon bucket in there if I had to. So I will find an alternative method to this, but I'm done with the tomatoes for now. Okay, so here are the beans, and you know, they're getting pretty close, but there's still quite a few in there that aren't ready yet. This corn. Corn is done. Okay, now I'm going to fill this back up with some more beans and some peas. Thanks for coming along with me. If you have any more suggestions about using my dehydrator um, for things that I can empty out of my freezer and make room for the tomato sauce that I'm going to can, or tomatoes that I will can into sauce, um, please let me know below. Um, I stocked up on a lot of frozen vegetables this year because I didn't know how well my garden was going to work and obviously I didn't have corn, I didn't have that many peas or that many green beans, so I'm glad I did stock up. But anyway, these will get dehydrated and into the food saver, which is back in that corner behind the air fryer, and we will get to that uh, in another video. I think pretty much everybody knows how to use those, they're really self-explanatory. I am planning to make another video still today, and I'll release it in a couple days so I can try to get my videos out on a more regular schedule. The video I'm going to do next, it's going to come out in a few days, is about my get home bag. Now, you guys will have to critique the get home bag and let me know if you think there's anything else I can try to cram into that little bag. So you'll see that in a couple days. If you have any suggestions on growing the tomatoes, what I need to do to can that stuff because I haven't gotten to that yet, or dehydrating, leave a comment below and I will talk to you guys later. Keep smiling because don't forget, a rainy day is no match for a sunny disposition. Bye. And don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and share.